Hey, March 21st. Uh, That's a museum those of you ordering yeah. camp shirts, yeah. that is the last day to turn it in. If you uh, still want one, and you can email me <laughs> after school, uh, shut, shut up, shut up, school, then I can try to add you into it, but I will be turning in the order later today. Tomorrow's quiz is going to cover the stories this week. That's why I gave you handout. There's going to be like five questions from there. Three of them come from the stories you had to read on your own. Other ones are just going to be from the stories I told. Some from today's stories, most from other stories this week. Hopefully you enjoyed the choice day. I mean, even if you didn't necessarily get your why first choice. Why does nobody do soccer? Soccer's like the best sport. 50% of kids in the school does soccer. Over 50. Crazy. No, 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 if 40% of the school plays soccer, that's my cousin. But they might have so so intermediate school has a soccer team. Why don't we have a soccer team? No one has a soccer team. I don't think so. 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 I don't think has a soccer team. Shut up. So there's no one to they play can make one. if we had a team. Just like, wait, 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 Let's knock out three people here real quick and then we can oh, we're almost done done with you guys. Well, we're not I like, knock out. That's it. And we're gonna go into again if you are needing the blue sheet answers on there. The blue sheet answers there. I now handed this out to you. And our stories for today. So we're gonna get to one about a boy who makes a poor choice and then one about a girl who makes a poor choice. Our first one is about a kid named Faith. But before I get to Faith, oh. with Apollo, his main job that he I had was the whole him. driving the sun chariot across the sky. Here's how they thought this worked. Ooh, what's the body of water in the middle? Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. And so they thought that they had a giant mountain on one side and a giant mountain on the other side. And Apollo had his own big castle on one of the mountains. Each morning, he had his chariot that he would drive across the sky. Some stories say that the chariot wheels were on fire, some that the horses were on fire. I've seen some say that he had a helmet that was on fire. Yeah. Fire was on there somewhere. And then he would drive across the sky throughout the day while giant monsters were up there that he had to dodge around. We know them as like a giant bull, a scorpion, yeah. stuff like that, that you guys would know them as the... Yeah, the Zodiac symbols they thought were actual monsters up in the sky. Evening time, he would land over here, take his uh, car, chariot, down to the Mediterranean where there was a boat waiting for him. He would get on the boat, ride the boat all the way across the Mediterranean throughout the night, get here in the middle of the night, go back up to there to start the whole thing over again. I sound like so a very boring day. life. And that's where the question comes up is, well, why not just put another castle over here, sleep, and then go back and forth. Because then the sun Sunrise rises in the, in the east. And, and that was their issue. And so the Greeks had to have an explanation for why the sun always starts from the same side as opposed to a giant ping pong ball. So their explanation was that he would go around. As you pointed out, it was a boring life, and it was nonstop. It was a 24-hour job, which Apollo did not like. Because what was the other thing he was the god of? chasing women. And this really cut into his ability to flirt with women. So a few hundred years to into his whole job, he decides to retire. He's like, I'm done driving this whole sun chariot thing. I want to spend time going and flirting with women. That is way more fun for me. So he goes and talks to a titan friend of his, a guy by the name of Helios, who is just random titan. And he goes, would you like to get promoted? Helios is like, how do you mean? He goes, well, I'm going to step down from driving the sun chariot. Would you like to step up and take over? Helios says, yes, that's awesome. Drawback is, Helios had recently fallen in love with a human girl and started a family. And Apollo's like, well, you're just going to have to ditch on them because this is pretty much a full-time thing. And Helios is like, sometimes you have to sacrifice for the job. So, Instead of it being Apollo's journey, it then becomes Helios's journey, and Apollo is just like a manager who gets to sit back and not worry about things. 
Well, Helios' son is a kid by the name of Phaethon. And Phaethon grows up never knowing who his father is. His mom, to try to keep him safe, never tells him who his dad is. Which is all great, except one day he gets bullied at school by these awful kids who are making fun of him, saying, hey, you don't have a father, and uh, things that mean kids would do. So he goes home after crying at school to confront his mom, and he's like, there are these bullies at school making fun of me, saying that I don't have a father, but you say I do have a father. Can you finally tell me who my father is? And his mom puts her arm around him, takes him outside, points up into the sky and goes, son, that is your father. And he goes, Mom, that's the sky. And she goes, your father is the sun god, Helios. He had to leave us shortly after you were born. He got promoted. He now drives the sun chariot across the sky. You are the son of the sun. And he's excited. And he goes to confront the bullies the next day at school and goes, you can't keep making fun of me because my dad is the sun god. And if you know bullies, that does not work. They just laugh at him and say, your mom is an idiot. She was just trying to tell you nice things. Why would you listen to that woman? So Phaethon comes up with a plan. He's like, you know what? If Helios really is my father and my mom is telling the truth, I am going to go confront him and have him do something about this. So he leaves home and decides to go on an adventure to find the mountain where Helios' mountain, his castle was. And over the next several months, he wanders until he finds it. Climbs up to the very tip top of this mountain, gets there in the middle of the night when he feels he's sure that Helios is going to be there. <sighs> Takes a big breath, throws open the giant doors at the top, and steps inside. When he does, there's this bright, radiating light powerful enough to probably kill any human that steps into it. But he's not a half god. He's a half god, so it does not kill him. But it does hurt, and he drops down to his knees, and he hears this booming voice say, Who dares enter my kingdom? And he goes down and says, My name is Phaethon. My mother says, You are my father. Is this true? And suddenly, the light disappears, and Helios puts his big flaming hat in the story I saw, into this little container and shuts it, thus no longer blinding Phaethon. And as Phaethon's eyes readjust, he can see this gigantic titan sitting in a throne, and he reaches out his hand and goes, Phaethon, I am your father. And no. Phaethon gets all excited. And later on, they put that into a movie. Then Helios goes, Phaethon, I'm sorry, I've not been here for you. I got promoted right after you were born. I had to choose my job. I feel bad. I've missed all of your birthdays. So I'm going to make it up to you. I'm going to give you one wish of whatever you want. You get your choice of anything you want. And if I can make it happen, I swear on the river sticks, it shall be so. What do we know about that? And so be it. This excites faith in him. He's like, oh, 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 yeah. He does a little shh, 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 shh. He's like, what is it I could? And he realizes he could have his dad go down and confront the bullies. He could have his dad beat up the bullies. But then he realizes if Helios really is his father, there is something he can ask that only this god can allow him to do that no other god could allow him. He wants to ride the chariot. Oh, so he looks at Helios and goes, Dad, I want to drive your chariot for one day. And Helios goes, do you want to ride in my chariot? And he goes, no, I want to drive your chariot. I want to be the one to go across the sky, and then I can like spell my name in the sky with the sun, and I can look down at the bullies and go, and I can taunt them. That's what I want. And Helios goes, no. He goes, well, he goes, yeah, uh, that, that can't happen because like you're like wee big and I'm like yay big uh, and the horses are really powerful and strong and there's these monsters that are up there. If you do this, you are going to die. Well, faith in as a teenager. Do teenagers make good choices? No. And he goes ahead and embraces it and he pouts and he was like, you promised that I could do this and if you go back on this promise, eh. and so they end up arguing 
until Helios' alarm goes off that says, we need to start the day. And Phaethon refuses to back down, and Helios has to let him, even though he says, you are going to die. You are my son. I love you. Please don't. And Phaethon goes, blah, 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 old man, and runs out to the garage and grabs the car keys. And he is excited to drive his dad's new car. And he sees these gigantic horses, and the reins are so big, he can't even, like, hold on to them. He has to, like, put both hands around one gigantic rein. He's, like, snapping it. He's like, yeah, horses! And it works. And it shoots off into the sky with him loving every moment of it, and Helios behind him screaming, and off he goes, and it works. He ends up driving out into the sky. And he's looking down, and he can see the bullies down on Earth, and he is having the time of his life. Is anyone in here a Scorpio with your sign? Do you know what that constellation is? No. No. Oh, it's a scorpion. So, as he is driving across, he gets somewhere over Africa into this area, and all of a sudden, as he's going across, this giant scorpion comes running out of the air right at him. And it is the biggest, scariest thing he's ever seen. Being the wee lad he is, he lets go of the reins, covers his eyes, and begins to scream. Well, as soon as he lets go of the reins, the horses are no longer being controlled, and they don't want to be anywhere near the scorpion. So they go away from the scorpion, which takes them straight down. And their burning horses end up going straight down and hitting Africa. When the horses and him curled into a little ball hit Africa, it bounces along the ground. As it does, it forever changes the landscape of Africa it forever. Makes it, it makes it like, there's like, it's very hot. Right? Yeah, it and this is how they explained how the Sahara Desert was formed. From the car coming down and bouncing, burning everything. But that's also how they explain the fact that people who live near this area, yeah. their skin got darkened from the sun coming down. And they figured that the closer you were to it, the darker your skin was. The farther you were from it, into the Mediterranean, your skin was less dark. That's what they explain in race. Uh-huh. Yeah. Until you get up to, like, France, when you have, like, lily white people who are really far away from it. And they're like, that was the only explanation they had. Well... There's a problem yeah. with this burning car bouncing off the ground and setting everything on fire. There's no deal. Zeus sees this happening. Why would Zeus be worried? Because there's no, no sacrifices. There's no sky. Nah. There's no sky. Get it it the world. There's no sun. The prophecy. the prophecy, which said what? Everybody fire. Everybody like fire. He sees this and he thinks it's the prophecy coming true. And Zeus is like, I have to solve this. Kill how does child. Zeus solve problems? Kill the child. That's how he solves everything. So Zeus pulls out his lightning bolt, yells, Fortnite! And throws his lightning bolt. He doesn't need three, he only needs one, and it hits him dead on, shattering the car into different pieces. One horse goes one way, one horse goes the other way. Little bits of faith and fall down, because huh. even though he's half god, he never had the nectar and ambrosia which just made him a really strong human, but apparently getting hit by a lightning bolt and then falling from the sky all the way to the ground is enough to kill him. And there is actually a river in Africa uh, that is somewhere is not in the Sahara, it's actually north of it, that is actually named after him and him hitting the ground. And this became their sort of explanation story for the Sahara Desert, how people about. have different skin colors and Anytime your kids don't listen to you and they get sassy, you would be like, oh, have you ever heard the story of Phaethon, the little boy who didn't listen to his parents? And they're like, no. And they're like, he died. And the kid's like, oh, no, I'll be good. What's up, King? Uh, how did Apollo, I mean, the other guy, get the <laughs> sun chariot back? Obviously, he had to get a new sun. Squirrel! So, as we go on from there, those of you who are like girls who say, hey, them boys are stupid. No. Let's get to our story about a stupid girl. So we'll try to make it as fair as I possible. Know. The story of a rat. So, have you guys been to Conner Prairie? Yeah. yeah. If you have, they have these things that are called, oh, those of you who have played Minecraft. Oh, yeah. They oh, yeah. They have so these things called, oh, oh, yeah. about the girl in the female who's Looms. 
And the way the loom works is that you would use it with all these strings, and it had like this little shaka shaka thing that would go across it, and you would put strings into it. You can build oh, I remember this. pictures I remember this story. So, like this is a tapestry, and it required an actual artistic skill to create it to put the strings in there. Like back over here behind where Jolie is, my big Spider-Man thing. That same idea where you use strings to build a thing. Well, there was a girl by the name of Arachne, this teenage girl, and she was really good at weaving. She was so good at weaving that people would actually show up to watch her do it. She would have her big loom sitting out in the middle of the area. People would come around her. They would put on like Arachne jerseys and cheer her on because, again, kids didn't have anything else fun to do. And they thought it was really exciting to watch her create these beautiful masterpieces. She was so good at it, people would compliment her and go, you know what? You must have been taught by the gods because there is a god of weaving, also of war and wisdom, and her name is Athena. Athena. And they would go, were you trained by Athena? Because we've never seen a human be this good at it. That infuriated Arachne. She was like, no, no god has ever taught me. I taught myself. I am naturally good at what I do. Actually, not only has a god not taught me, I'm better than Athena. And you know how I know I'm better than Athena? Because I just said it, and she's not here. <laughs> what do you think about that? And all the people are like, dang, she's right. She did just say she's better than Athena, and I don't see the god here. Maybe she's correct. Well, this rumor starts to spread until who hears it? Athena. Yeah. Naturally. But Athena is not as evil as some of the other gods. So Athena's like, all right. Maybe this girl's confused. Sometimes teenagers make poor choices. I'm going to give her a chance. So she comes down to Earth, takes the form of an old woman, and then goes into the town where Arachne is, and sort of waddles up to her, and she's like, Hey, dear, you're really good at doing that. And Arachne goes, Thank you. She goes, Hmm, I bet you learned that from one of the gods, and you have to give them credit. And Arachne's like, No, old woman. No god taught me how to do this. I learned how to do this on my own. In fact, I'm better than the gods, random old woman who came into my village. And that's at that point, she goes, you know what? If Athena was here in front of me, I'd challenge her, and I bet she'd back down. Athena oh. goes, game on. Grabs her face and goes, rip, pulls it off, and it turns out it's her in front of them. She does not go into full form. She wow. just, but I assume if you all have seen, if you're back in this time, and you watch a woman go, rip and pull off all of her old woman disguise and all of a sudden it's a woman standing there you're not gonna be like shenanigans <laughs> so they believe it's probably gonna be athena and athena's like girl it is athena i'm right here in front of you i think it's time you apologize i will forgive you i'm one of the not and arachne goes shut your face she goes you know what if you think you're better than me now you're in front of me why don't you and i have a weave off and all of a sudden, the crowd goes wild. And they're like, weave off, weave off. And a bunch of the girls grab their hair and go, no. Oh, different kind of weave off. And they get all excited. So Athena goes, done. And she reaches in her pocket and pulls out her pocket loom and throws it on the ground. And she goes, girlfriend, it's on. And a whole bunch of people come running out of the houses. And they start putting on their Athena jerseys. And they're like, oh, this is the best day ever. And it becomes this giant weaving competition between a rat and and Athena. And Athena goes, all right, we will both create a picture and we will let the crowd decide to see who is better at it. Let's make our pictures something about the gods. Whatever you want, we're going to do it about the gods since you have challenged a god to a battle. And they go, all right. So they both tie their hair back and they're like, all right, let's get it on. And like all of them put the string in there like, shaka, 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 shaka. And sweat is coming down and the crowd is cheering. They're like, I wish we had something more exciting to watch. But they're watching this big thing happen. Well, Athena, in hers, ends up doing this picture of all the gods doing nice things, like Prometheus bringing fire down to mankind, uh, the battle between her and Poseidon to bring food to the city of Athens, and any other nice thing she can think of. And she works it in there, and it looks amazing. And the people on her side are like, girl, you got no friends, you got what's going on? And then she looks over at Arachnes, and two things happen. One, she sees that Arachne is also making pictures of the gods, but her pictures are of gods doing embarrassing, horrible things, like Kronos eating all of his children, 
Dionysus's mom being destroyed by Zeus. In any other story that she can think of that embarrasses the gods, which is awful and infuriates Athena. But to make it worse, Arachne's better. And not like a little bit better, but like hands down better. And Athena loses it. Not only is this girl sassy, not only is she insulting the gods, but on top of it all off, she's better than she is. So Athena, in a fit of rage, picks up her loom, goes over to Arachne, and just starts to beat her with the loom. Little bits of it go flying, it starts shattering, the crowd starts screaming, Arachne curls into a ball, there's like froth coming out of Athena's mouth, and she's like, you're a disrespectful little teenager and no one left, and she's going like, yep, and the crowd freaks out, and all of a sudden, Athena's in the middle of beating this child, and is like, oh, and looks at the crowd and is like, hey, and then puts the loom down, and she goes, um, <laughs> Oopsie! Uh, kind of lost my cool there. And the crowd is just staring at her with giant eyes. And she goes, um, I apologize. Probably shouldn't have done that. Kind of a bad thing. But Arachne's not dead. But she has just been beaten by a god in front of all of her fans and friends. And she is embarrassed. So while Athena talks to the crowd, Arachne, in a fit of embarrassment, pulls all the strings she can off of her loom and then goes over to this nearby tree, crawls up the tree with the string, and starts wrapping it around her neck, throws it over one of the limbs, and hangs herself in front of this crowd. Athena doesn't see it happening. She's talking to the crowd, They're like, turn, no, you, turn. She's like, I know, I, They're like, no, turn. She's like, why are you guys all freaking out? What's going on? Ah! And she sees this girl hanging behind her, and Athena feels bad. And she walks over to Arachne and she goes, Dear, you're insulting and you made a poor choice, but you are really good at weaving. You don't deserve to die for what you did. I am not going to let you die this day. But you also don't get to be unpunished because you did insult the gods. So I am going to take away your right to be a human. But because you're so good at weaving, you will weave for the rest of eternity. And all of your descendants will weave for the rest of eternity. So she ends up turning her into a spider. And this is where the first spider comes from. And so that way, she gets to weave for the rest of her life. And the scientific name for a spider is arachne. And so that comes from arachne, is where we get the word arachnid. And so that is our story of arachne and the idea of getting into a fight with a god and the fact that sometimes teenagers don't make good choices. And tomorrow, we'll take a quiz.